Uh, as many of you will know, my view of the two sites that have been put forward, the site to the west of Stamford, even though it is closer to the villages, I think will be much less disruptive because all of the traffic is contained within the lorry parks. It accesses directly from the motorway and rejoins the motorway directly from the parks without disturbing other roads. So when Operation Stack is called, um, the lorry parks would take the volume of traffic that is held up in phases one and two of Operation Stack without the motorways having to be closed and without the A20 being jammed up. And I think that will make a huge difference to people's lives, particularly in villages like these. But as I say, the, the question will be which site is chosen. And then in terms of mitigation for the villagers, you know, firstly, we make sure that Highways England do what they've suggested they would do in the consultation, which is make sure there's landscaping, screening, you know, proper mitigation around the sites themselves so that the impact is as small as possible. One thing I have particularly uh, focused on when we were discussing this with the government, particularly when we were discussing this with the Chancellor of the Exchequer, was to make sure that when Highways England went out the consultation, the budget they had was big enough that we could deliver what, in my view, of the two sites is the better site, which is much more expensive than the alternative site off of Stone Street. And I wanted to make sure the Chancellor made that money available so that if we take one of these two sites forward and people go for what, what I've preferred and what the Council, the Sheffield Council have preferred, that we can deliver it. We've got the budget to deliver it because I believe the impact of that site will be much, much less on the, on the whole district and particularly the villages close to it than the alternative site. Uh, and that's why I think it's worth having. And it also involves the smallest loss of land of the two sites as well. Uh, until this summer, we'd never had stages three and four of Operation Stack before. And if we'd had the lorry park this summer, instead of the motorway being closed for 32 days, it would have been closed for three days. But that is a monumental difference. The fact that the lorry park can take phases one and two of Stack, which is the closure of junctions eight and nine and 10 to 11 of the motorway, means that we can deal with that traffic off-road and keep the roads open. That is a massive change. Contraflow as, as an option too. Now, contraflow is not possible unless you've also got a large area to hold lorries off-road. And this is something we explored with Highways England in the summer, when my view and the view of the other Kent MPs was we should do whatever it takes to get the roads open again. So the, this, this plan will solve stack as we know it. I can't promise there will never be congestion on our roads, but to have a situation where we can manage stack 95% of the time with no disruption to local roads at all is a monumental difference. And this summer, we wouldn't be having this debate if we'd had three days of stack this summer, but we had 32 days of stack this summer, and that could be a warning for the future. And I don't believe we can sit by and do nothing about that. We'll, we'll know, David and Susan at those meetings. I push probably harder than anyone else to make Highways England look at a co contra getting Contraflow going just to get the motorways going again, when, particularly when we had the motorways shut in both directions. Now, the reason that they, uh, they, they have big difficulties with making contraflow work is that you have, uh, as we run Operation Stack at the moment, you have the lorry separated into two lanes, one for the port, one for the tunnel. You then, uh, if you, you then have a sort of third lane which needs to be kept open for emergency service vehicles as well. And then if you try and bring contraflow in, into that, uh, if there's an accident or a problem, they, they can't guarantee you can get the emergency vehicles in to, to deal with it uh, because of the congestion. It would only operate, open a small amount of capacity back on the motorway. Now, in the summer, I said that's better than nothing. But their view was, even if you brought it in, it might actually make congestion worse. You would, you would manage the congestion in a slightly different way, but they couldn't guarantee it could be done safely. They couldn't guarantee it would make much of a difference, and it's certainly that it wouldn't relieve the pressure on the A roads, which was one of the big concerns, because people just couldn't get about. Now, I could just ignore all of that information, and we could ignore all that information, so we don't believe you make it work. But that was very clearly their recommendation and the view of the police who have big concerns about it too. So it really, I mean, certainly this summer, when we were prepared to look at anything we could possibly do to get the roads open, uh, that was something that was looked at properly. They also felt um, that even with Contraflow, you still need an area to put lorries off roads as well to try and create the space to make the Contraflow scheme work, which is why the emergency solution in the summer was brought forward of using Manston as kind of emergency relief just to get lorries off the road. And I pushed harder probably than anyone else to make them look at uh, that option. I sat in a meeting saying, are you really sure Manston won't work? And they said, no, we don't think it will. And of course, lo and behold, it turned out it did, or it could work. 
It's not ideal, but it's better than, in my view, just closing the motorways indefinitely when Stack is on. So, but if we want a permanent solution, one that is available whenever Stack is called, and we don't, we don't, often, don't often get noticed that Stack is going to be called, it can happen because of an incident beyond our control and the restrictions got to come in quickly, then we need dedicated facilities that we can use. And that, is, that has been the view consistently brought forward uh, by Harbour Zing and by the police, by the other authorities as well. Um, I would do everything I can, as I know the council will as well, to support the villages in making sure there is proper you know, mitigation, compensation for the households that are affected directly in terms of any loss of value on their property. There's something else that, of course, has to be worked through as well, and at this stage in the process, we're just not, you know, we're, we're not at that stage yet. Highways England haven't provided this information. In terms of you know, noise, air quality, uh, questions I know people have raised, there will have to be a proper environmental statement done you know, on, the, on the final design. But the final design hasn't been done yet. That work has simply not been done yet. It doesn't mean to say that we are disregarding its importance. It just, yet, it just means at this moment in time, until Highways England complete this consultation and make a recommendation on a site uh, and start the detailed planning on that site, that'll be the time when we probe further on those sorts of questions too. I and, uh, and the council and will do everything we can, to, if the plan goes ahead, to support residents in making sure they're properly compensated for any blight or, or damage, loss of value to, to their property. Um, and they, Highways England and the government will have an obligation to make sure that they've got the funding available to deliver that compensation. That is absolutely clear and it is set out in the consultation documents. When Operation Stack is in place, and we've got day after day after day of thousands of lorries being held and queuing on the motorway, when we've got a, at least maximum sort of seven to eight thousand lorries being held on the motorway, and congestion on all the A roads around it as well, that is causing pollution too. So whether the, the, the park would cause any more pollution than we already have with uh, the motorway and Operation Stack, we, would, you know, we would have to see. But that detailed work, that data, that study would be part of the environmental uh, statement that we put forward on the final plan. But as I say, it has to be within the law. The Highways England can't break sort of air quality law just to create the lorry park. They will have to demonstrate that they believe it'll operate within it. We're in a process with, with the design of the lorry parks where what Highways England have looked at is sites and then making a selection of two, which they think are viable in terms of their suitability to, to deal with the volume of traffic, uh, the ability to manage the flow of lorries in and out, not just of the lorry parks, but then onto their destinations. And in terms of traffic management, how they would work, there is still, still more detailed work they would have to do in terms of the environmental statement and impact to make sure that it, was, it, it met the law, met the requirements of the law. So at the moment, what Highways England are consulting on is two possible sites which they think work in terms of traffic management, and then they will do more detailed work on designing the final park itself. Now, there's always this debate when you say, sometimes if, if public bodies like Highways England keep everything to themselves, don't tell anyone anything, and then suddenly produce the final plan and say, that's it, everyone says, well, why, why was there no discussion or consultation? And when they bring designs and plans forward slightly earlier in the process, People say, well, why haven't you answered all our questions yet? Now, the Highways England have been very clear. They won't make the final design and pr pr produce all the details you'd normally expect in the sort of planning, the planning of something of this scale until there's a decision on, on the final site. The issues of managing air quality and the environment would apply whichever sites that you, you chose. But I think you, know, you should set against that, what the, the pollution that stack causes anyway, because it is not as if we don't have pollution caused by lorries on the road when stack is on. In terms of a solution to stack, I and others were very, very clear with the Secretary of State for Transport, the Home Secretary, other senior government ministers and Highways England in the summer that we had to have a solution to stack and what our brief was was we had to have a mechanism for keeping the roads open, keeping the A roads open, keeping the motorway open, and two-way flow of traffic on the motorway it, when there was congestion at the port and the tunnel. That is, that is what the residents of Kent demanded last summer, and I think they have a right to expect. And we weren't going to tolerate 
the turning of the motorway into a lorry park, which is what happens at the moment. The, the, you know, we already have a large lorry park for operation stack. It's called the M20, and that, that cannot continue. What we have done is we have gone to Highways England and said, we want you to design a solution to this problem. And the solution that we want is our roads are kept open, and they're not, our, our motorway is not turned into a lorry park every time, the, every time there's a problem at the Channel Tunnel and the Port of Dover. And all the lorry oh, there's not a problem there, the lorries can't get to the continent. What they have done is looked at a very large number of ideas that were put to them by Kent County Council and uh, uh, by the, the special group they convened, and they've done their own study. And they've come up with two schemes that they think are viable and they think can work. Uh, um, the, issue, the issues of policing, including, including things like prostitution, the police believe are much easier to deal with, from their point of view, much easier to stop if the lorries are being held in concentrated areas. It's much harder for them to do that if the lorries are being held over a stretch of 30 miles of motorway. I will expect Kent Police to effectively police that. And what I'm, what I'm saying is, I think that it will be easier for them to do that than it is to police stack at the moment, which, is, which, which causes they have... You know, Operation Stack is a massive drain on Kent Police resources because of the scale, because of the many miles of, of motorway that are taken up the traffic management of the A roads, and trying to manage all those vehicles, any other of the associated issues you've described that could come with having lorries being held up for periods of time on the roads network, is massively resource intensive for them. They will have more resources that they can devote to, to effectively policing operation staff using a, 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 the lorry parking site held in two areas other side of the motorway. But it's much easier for them to use their resources to police that effectively than it is to police operation stack at the moment, where there could be some of those issues you describe, but it's hard for the police to monitor it because it is spread out over such a large area. So I would expect the police to, to keep people safe and to do their job. What I'm saying is the police believe that it'll be easier to do that with the lorry park proposals that have been put forward. Now, we were not prescriptive in terms of the solutions. Now, in the, in the summer, now, we asked Highways England to look at all sorts of options, and I know that they, they looked at holding areas outside of Kent. They looked, you know, we asked them to look at would it be feasible to use the M26 as the holding area rather than the M20, uh, to look at all sorts of uh, alternative solutions. What we keep coming back to is they believe that the only, and it's not just them, it's the police and the ports on the tunnel who have to manage the, the flow of traffic out as well, that the only effective way, the only guarantee of being able to manage operation stack is with lorry parking areas. Now, one of the issues, even with smart technology, is stopping queue jumping and stopping lorries trying to beat the queues uh, to get to the most advantageous position. Trying to manage that with sites outside of Kent, further away, multiple locations where lorries are being directed to or being drawn down from is much, much harder. One of the big problems with stack is not just holding whilst there is a delay, it's the process of clearing the backlog as well. And the reason, again, that a, 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 an off-road lorry parking solution that's as close as possible to the tunnel and the port has been preferred is that it enables you to clear the backlog much, much quicker because you're managing the flow of lorries over a much smaller distance. So I don't believe that the technology exists that would man enable us, make it possible for us to manage stack in the way you've suggested and keep the roads free of congestion and keep the lorries where we want them to be and being held where we want them to be so they're not in the way uh, of our day-to-day -day life, and that they can be drawn down and got out of the country as quickly as possible. And that is why, you know, I think for the number of years we've been discussing this, the authorities have always believed that the only viable solution are holding areas close to the ports and the tunnel. And um, so I think I have to be honest with you and say, whilst um, it, it, would be, it would be nice to believe we could manage the lorries in that kind of a way. No one believes it is possible, and I think if we invested the money in doing that, we would be investing the money in a scheme that would fail. The options of managing lorries across the country from multiple sites, multiple parks, are considered to be incredibly difficult, will probably lead to massive queue jumping, lorries scattered all over the place, and more congestion. Now, that is, that is the clear advice, not just from Highways England, but from the police and other authorities as well. Now, we could choose to ignore that and say then we don't believe it, but then we have to expect that probably any solution that is designed ignoring all that evidence won't work and we'll probably end up with a, a mess which is just as big as the one we're left with now. So it's not a question that you put 4,000 lorries, you hold them there, and then when that's full, they just stay there until Operation Stack is lifted and other places are found. The lorries are moving and queuing through all the time. 
That is why having lots and lots of lorry parks is much harder than managing one, because you're having to move, people, move lorries through lots of different multiple sites, and the risk of queue jumping and confusion gets greater, and probably just end up lorries scattered all over the place. But um, if, um, if we're going to have an effective scheme to manage the problem, then what Highways England have been tasked to do is design what that scheme would look like and come up with a scheme which we believe can work and would work. What Highways England have said is that if the volume of traffic coming out of the lorry park is such that uh, it, you know, with the combination of the flow of traffic on the motorway at that time, it may cause uh, congestion problems, they may impose a temporary speed limit whilst lorries are being drawn out. But that is only, sorry, if I could finish the answer, sorry, but that is, no, but, but we're only looking then at days when operation stack is, is fully at use because the lorry park on the north side of the uh, M20 is the, if you like, the sort of the, the bigger area of parking that is used when Operation Stack is on and we're drawing lorries out of it. Now, that is not going to be an everyday occurrence, but it's going to be also, I think, a facility that is not only important for dealing with Operation Stack when we have major outbreaks of it, major, major delays caused by it, but it is also something that can be used to deal with other issues like, uh, like Dover Tap and other, other times when there are congestion on the motorway between the lorry parks uh, and the coast. with the worst day being 150 lorries in a single day. So we don't have adequate lorry parking facilities at the moment, the parking facilities that lorries are happy to properly access and use. That is one of the reasons why we see lorries parked up all over the place, and we see temporary lorry parks or lorry parks without planning permission popping up to deal with the demand. So I think it would be ridiculous to build a lorry park uh, to deal with operation stack and overflow issues, and then not allow lorries to use it um, when the lorry parking, other lorry parking facilities are full. I think what residents should expect is, if this lorry park is built, that we will see an end to lorries being scattered all around the place, and, and lorries will no longer have the excuse that there's nowhere for them to go, because there will have been lorries that were turned away from Stop 24 in the last few months because there wasn't enough space for them to park there. So we should deal with that. And the other issue is, is Dover, Dover Tap. If we have, as we often have, lorries queuing up, back from the A20, back through the Round Hill Tunnel, you know, causing congestion and delays, and we could use the lorry park to remove those restrictions, then that is clearly something of benefit to the whole area. Lorries queuing out of the Channel Tunnel exit, even though the Channel Tunnel have built an additional 300 spaces for lorry parking there, that is a routine thing. And what we do know, any operational delays in the, at the port or the tunnel cause backlog and congestion. And as the number of uh, lorries on the road is going to grow from sort of 10,000 a day trying to access the tunnel of the port to about 16,000 a day in the next few years, we know that any delays like this, just normal operational delays, will cause greater backlog as well. So if we can use those facilities to deal with that, we should. But what everyone will know um, is the consultation sets out four options for what these facilities could be used for. Option one is only for operation stack. And option four uh, makes it a sort of 24-7 you know, car park and facility. Now myself and Chepway Council and uh, many of the other councils have said that we would, uh, would favour the lorry park being used for you know, some overnight lorry parking, for dealing with issues like Dover Tap and operation stack. What we wouldn't favour is the lorry park on the north side of the M20 becoming a permanent sort of motorway service station you know, being run 24-7. We've already got one of those, it's called Stop 24. We're already planning to, in these plans, to expand the parking there, and we should use that as the main facility to, to run 24-7, not the extended lorry park. the days when we would see the lorry park full with 4,000 trucks would be limited to the days when Operation Stack was, was fully in force. Now, we can use these facilities for other things, but you're looking at a much, much lower level of vehicles. And as I've said, I think the primary place those vehicles should go would be on the expanded Stop 24 services and not on the north side of the motorway.
money is not conditional on this lorry park being used as a commercial lorry park. It is for us to respond to the consultation, and Highways England have set out a series of options. I think many people would feel that if we'd use the lorry park to end fly parking and end things like Dover Tap, that would be good for the local infrastructure, that would be a good thing for the local community, as well as having a facility that can deal with operation stack nine times out of ten. What Highways England have said in this consultation, what the Department for Transport have confirmed to me this week as well, which is consistent with what has been said so far, is that Highways England have put forward two sites they believe are viable. They will consider other, other ideas that people want to bring forward in the consultation as well. When they report back on the consultation, they will make, it, the views they will make a decision. If that is to recommend a particular site, they will also explain why they have disregarded other sites as well. So people can bring forward, and I know that you know, Stanford Parish Council uh, has put forward an alternative plan for parking 4,000 lorries, uh, and that can be considered by Highways England, and then they will give a response as, as a result of the consultation. So that is an important thing to remember. We've been discussing the two sites this evening, but people can still put forward other suggestions too. Now, people can put forward, as Stanford Parish Council has done, alternative plans and ideas uh, which can be, can be and will be considered by Highways England. And Highways England said that they will report back, not just on their preferred sites as a result of the consultation, but answering uh, questions people have put and consideration of other schemes too. Lots of the questions that, that you are asking, sir, and other people have asked today and during the consultation are very similar to the questions that we ourselves asked in the summer. You know. So I appreciate that the, the consultation plans were published in November uh, and people are looking at them now. But this is a process that has gone on for not just many months of last year, but really many years of considering viable alternatives to operation staff. As I said, we can make alternative suggestions too, as people have done, and I think the plan that, that Stamford and Hawkins, sort of Stamford and Monks Horton and Stouting Councils have put forward, the one that was outside earlier on, I think is a really interesting idea. I think Highways England should look at it. I think my view, and I'm sure I probably Shepway's view as well, would be if Highways England look at that plan and say, actually, that is perfectly viable, perfectly deliverable within the budget, and we think, you know, then, then we would support that. You know, what we want is a viable plan that can work. What, what I want to see is the delivery at pace of a solution to operation stack that can be operational next year. Now, we are consulting on two ways of doing that. As, if, as a result of that, a better idea comes out, you know, maybe the idea that you, that's been put forward by the Parish Council as a different way of doing it, then that is fine. But what I wouldn't support is an endless debate with no conclusion and no result into you know, lots of other schemes which, which, which people might, might like the look of more. There has to be an endpoint in this process where we have the delivery of a scheme which will, be, will be work and will end the blight of Operation Stack. Um, right, sorry. The only reason we're discussing any of this at all is because of the quality of life of Kent residents. Because the Operation Stack restrictions have made life in Kent totally intolerable. And our district is one of the areas that suffers the most, as other communities along the M20 do. So the reason that we've asked for this large amount of public money to be made available, the reason Highways England have been tasked with coming up with proposals, is so that we can deal with that problem. Because 10,000 lorries a day, stuck with nowhere to go, days and days and days on end, because they can't get out of the country, it has a, it's a, has a massive impact on our quality of life in many ways. And if we can deal with that, we can come up with a plan to stop that, that is what we're trying to do. That is the only motivation anyone has for wishing these proposals to be developed, to be looked at and to be consulted on, is that we come up with a solution to Operation Snack. That is what the people of Kent demanded, that's what the people of this district demanded, and that is what we're working on. You are uh, sorry, no, 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 sorry, please sit down. In terms of other ports and other routes to the continent, um, we, in the summer, the government asked uh, for it to, asked to be studied whether it was viable to get Ramsgate open again, and it is not. It, it is not viable to reopen uh, Folkestone Port. 
we are reliant on the Dover Calais and the Channel Tunnel route. There are other then other options. You're looking much further afield. The reason that this route is so popular is because it is the shortest and it is the quickest and it's the direction the traffic wants to go. Now you might say, well, if it means could we redesign the entire freight industry of the UK so that we don't have the lorry park? I'm afraid that is not an that is not a solution anyone is going to deliver, and anyone who says they are is lying. FDS operate Dunkirk. They have. There are other operators that would like to go into Dunkirk as well. There aren't the berths there to do that. Dunkirk Port is a private port. Now, if we could see more berths built at Dunkirk, so we have an alternative you know, sea routes, more um, you know, robustness in the system, then that that is a good thing. We do use the signs to direct people to the best best location they can go to. And when stack is enforced, there are signs on the M1 which tell people way before they get to London or Kent uh, that there are delays. Uh, in Kent and therefore they should try and make alternative plans but importantly the lorries take the view they'd rather get as close as they can to the point of exit even if that means sitting in a queue. On rail freight the issue with rail is not bureaucracy it's cost it is much more expensive to move uh, rail freight over land uh, by rail than it is by road. That is why the uh, industry favours haulage. But I discussed this with Eurotunnel. I mean, they are the operators. One of the things I discussed with Eurotunnel is, given we put lorries in cages on trucks to go through the tunnel, could we start that process further inland? You know, so rather than doing it here, we do it. We put the lorries on rail further in further inland, at either at Edgefleet or even at Daventry, at the huge sort of freight terminal at Daventry in the middle of the country. To do that, we would require a massive investment in in widening the tracks, extending, building out bridges to create the infrastructure to bring that sort of rail infrastructure uh, into the Channel Tunnel site. So as an engineering challenge, it would be technically possible, more expensive for the users, but it requires massive, massive expenditure of infrastructure to, make, to build it out and make it happen. At the moment, our rail infrastructure just simply is not of the size and scale to cope with that, and it is a format that the industry itself doesn't want because uh, it can't support it. Now, of course, I would welcome any investment in rail infrastructure if that can take some of the load off of us. But it is not something which is going to solve the, the problem of Operation Stack. Yeah. And I think we have to be clear about that. The message, I believe, was loud and clear from my constituents this summer, was that they wanted an alternative to Operation Stack. No, I'm afraid, I'm afraid that, is, that I, I, I think that is overwhelmingly the case. The people were fed up a bit and they wanted an alternative. So what we have done is put pressure on the government to come, up with, up bit, to come up with an alternative. It was pressure from us. It was pressure from the Kent MPs, pressure from the councils uh, to say this is intolerable and it cannot be allowed to carry on. And we put pressure on them to make sure there was a solution and that Highways England couldn't just use the motorway as a lorry park, which is what they've been doing. Now, from my point of view, I have to represent 80,000 electors in my constituency. And I said to you, there are many people in this room who don't agree with the plans that have been put forward. And as we have discussed already, people can put forward alternative ideas and suggestions, as Stamford Parish Council have done. But also, from my point of view, you know, Shepway District Council support the plan, Folkestone Council, Hawkinge Council, Dimchurch Council, New Romney Council, Hyde Council. I have to represent all of those people too. Uh, in terms of what we'd normally expect to come in place with Stack. Now, that doesn't mean to say the only roads infrastructure that we're building to provide resilience for the future is this lorry park, you know, if, if, we go ahead, if it goes ahead. The part of the, the highways plan will be, uh, for Kent as well, is the, the selection of the site for the third Thames crossing. Uh, linked to that, what we want to see is the completion of the duelling of the A2, so we have a proper motorway, dual carriageway route uh, along the A2, M2 corridor as well into Dover. I think that makes the management of... Uh, traffic much easier for the future as well. I would certainly think in terms of future proofing and thinking in the future, why not look at other sites along that route too? If we need extra lorry parking in the future, that should be along an alternative Dover route, not just on the M20 corridor too. 
so I think all of those things are things that need to be properly explored for the future in terms of providing better resilience for Kent's roads. But even if we did all of those things, I think we would still need a lorry park on the M20 that can cope with stack as we see it now. It also means without any resilience, if there are problems on our side, which there are from time to time, you know, when we had the major fire in the tunnel, if we have an incident where the tunnel is shut for a week or so, there is no contingency, there's no, there's no, no other way of managing that problem other than closing the motorways down. If there's bad weather, the same. If there is any kind of operational difficulty which causes congestion and backlog, the same. Stat comes into force. We see it all the time, we see it increasingly. And I think if, if we really want to be serious about coming up with a solution to Operation Stack, these are the sorts of things we have to be thinking about. I mean, the, the, over the last 10 years, the Kent County Council has been looking at that. That work was really, I think, started again at pace at the beginning of last year after we had uh, incidents with stacks sort of January, uh, early February last, uh, last year. And what has come forward is really built on all the work that's been done over the last decade and other sites that Highways England have brought forward. What we want them to do, though, is if they, when a decision is made, and if a decision is made to take forward one of those sites, that they get on and build it as quickly as possible, and the money's been made available for them to make sure they can do that. Um, firstly, that Stanford site on that old KCC consultation is not the same as the two sites that have been put forward. I think that Stanford site actually is most closely fits the site that Highways England rejected, which is the site uh, to the east of um, the uh, Junction 11 uh, stop. So that is, uh, and in many ways, the Highways England's rejection of that site may reflect some of the environmental concerns you yourself have raised there. So although it's labelled Stanford, it is a different site. Um, in terms of KCC's view, I mean, I, I, I and David would say, you know, we've, we've resolutely rejected a lot of the ideas KCC put forward. If KCC had had their way, they probably would have built the lorry park here, um, not in the castle, but at Western Hangar. They would have built it on the wrong side of the motorway and taken and created a 4,000 space lorry park here. I'm glad Highways England looked at that plan and rejected it because it would have, I think, caused a lot of congestion, a lot of problems, uh, and not solved all of the problems of Operation Stack uh, and not minimise the impact on the community in the way the two sites that have been put forward can. The operation stack as it stands at the moment, where 30% of lorries will queue jump and they will try and go their way, they will try and avoid the queuing restrictions to make their way directly to the port or the tunnel, and then they turn back and they're told they've got to get back in the queue because uh, they can't queue jump. Now, I think if you have proper parking facilities, you will, I think, reduce that number of people at queue jump because there won't be a queue. You know, you, what you're not asking people to do is wait in, um, wait at the top of the M20 and queue for a very long period of time just to get closer to the place you want to go. You'll have free access on the motorway to get to the lorry parking area where you'll be drawn down from, and that is a big difference from how things are now. I met a, one of the haulage companies in the summer based at Link Park, and one of the points they made to me was, because of the way stack works at the moment, they had lorries that had to join the queue at the other side of Junction 4 of the M20. They spent 17 hours on the road burning fuel uh, just to get back to Junction 11 again on the right side of the motorway. Now, with a proper lorry parking facility either side of the motorway, that, that would be negated. You wouldn't have to do that. You could just go straight into the lorry park and wait to be drawn down from there. And I think most lorry drivers would see a facility like that with amenities is much better than being stuck on the motorway for tens of hours, which is what they have to do at the moment. So I think it reduces some of the incentive for people to queue jump as they do at the moment. Because they would be drawn, they would be drawn off the they would be drawn off the motorway into the into the lorry park. Now at the moment we just you know th that separation takes place already between lorries and cars. But rather than um, taking the lorries off into a into a into a lorry parking area, they obviously just sit on the motorway. Now, when that stack, stack restriction is in place, for the lorries to get to the front of the queue is very difficult because the motorway is shut. Now here the motorway will be open. The motorway will be open running normally all the way down to the place where they can park as close as they can get to uh, the point of, uh, of, um, get, of, of departure, uh, they're being held there. 
if they do try and queue jump, then there's a very short distance to be sent back to the place where they've got to go. So I think we can contain operations that much more effectively than we can at the moment, where we've got two thirds of the lorries blocking up the roads and the other third trying to escape the queues and then being sent back, causing even more congestion. The, the, the alternatives to operation stack you know, have, al have always ended up falling back on off-road lorry parking. You know, that, that, I mean, for the six years I've been a member of Parliament, that, is, that has been the case. And different people have put forward different ideas of where that off-road lorry parking should go. But the basic point everyone falls back on is if the port's closed and the tunnel's closed uh, and we've got thousands of lorries we've got to put somewhere else, if you want to keep the motorways open, you have to find somewhere else to put them. And the view has always been that, that, that the only viable way of managing that is with off-road lorry parking. Uh, and the best way to manage that in terms of reducing the impact on people in Kent is to make that parking as close to the points of departure as possible. So with this process uh, this summer, coming out of the summer, and, and all the options in terms of you know, messaging, you know, uh, trying to manage the, 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 the freight, you know, are all things that Highways England try to do this summer and failed because they just couldn't cope with the volume of traffic and they couldn't control the traffic. So again, we fell back on the need for some off-road site. Highways England were asked to go away and come up with a plan, an actual alternative to operation stack, something where you could keep the motorways open in both directions and not put the pressure on the A roads to come up with a plan. And they then came up with their two solutions, their two which have gone into the consultation. But what we did at that point was then go and ask for the money. So it wasn't a question of saying, give us some money and then let's see what we can do with it. It was saying first, what is a viable plan that we, that we can deliver, we think is going to work, to, to, that is an alternative to operation stack. And then, then what I did uh, with support of my Kent colleagues was go to the Chancellor and say, OK, this is what's going to go, this is what Highways England are putting forward. Uh, we don't think we should have a consultation on this unless the government is prepared to pay for the delivery of one of those two solutions. And we want to make sure that we get enough money to pay for the more expensive solution, which we think of the two, if one of these two has got, has got to go forward, one is much more expensive but is better for the community in our view, and we want to make sure the money is there so it's a genuine choice. It's not just you know, a question of saying we've just got to do what's affordable, but we'll do the one which we think is going to work best and give people the chance to have, that, have their say on that. So you know, the process has been, you know, we need a solu long-term solution, design the solution, find the money to pay for it, ask people what they think. Well, they've, um, they've expanded their facilities as they can in the interest of themselves and their customers. So the, the building work that took place this summer at the Channel Tunnel site to provide um, additional lorry parking spaces is um, something that um, they paid for and delivered themselves. But uh, the reason we went to the government for this you know, was we feel this is you know, also a piece of national infrastructure. Um, it happens to be in Kent because that's where the tunnel is and that's where the port is. And it, and it, it should be funded after national infrastructure. Now, of course, the cost of it will also be recouped over five years by the lorry charging scheme, the foreign lorry charging scheme we brought in in the last parliament. So we now make all foreign lorries pay a levy to use our roads, and that brings £50, £60 million pounds a year. So if you say, well, should, should the haulage industry be paying for it, then indirectly they will by contributing to this fund.